Hi, I'm Sean from Jumpbox, and this tutorial is going to show you how to get a Jumpbox working on VirtualBox, which is the open source virtualization technology from Sun. Um, and the big disclaimer here is that this is not an officially supported platform of ours at this point. It does work with a little bit of flakiness, and we will support it in the future, but right now um, it's just not an officially supported version. So here's the, the big overview of what we're about to do, and within the next you know, five minutes we should be able to have this running. So let's get started. I'm going to make the assumption that you've already downloaded and installed VirtualBox. If not, go here, get the one that's right for your platform. We're going to be working on an Intel Mac. Um, the other thing I'm going to assume is that you've already downloaded a Jumpbox. If not, you go to our website, go to the Applications page, um, and then we have a bunch of free ones here that you can try. We're going to today be working with the Sugar CRM one. So go ahead and download that. And uh, again, I'm going to assume that you've already done that. So next thing we need to do is to extract the jump box. So unzip it. And this will think for a minute and I'm going to fast forward here. Okay, and once that's done extracting, you'll see that we have a directory that looks like this. So now what we need to do is go into uh, VirtualBox and add the hard disks first thing. So we go in here, click the add button. Uh, let's navigate to that directory we just created. And just, you're just going to add the ones that say VMDK. And we need to add the, that was the data one, now we just need to add the root. Okay, good. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, we've done number one, we've done number two, now we're going to set up a new VM. So let's go back into VirtualBox, uh, say new. And we'll just walk through this wizard here. We've got to give it a name. So I'm just going to say my sugar jump box. Uh, as far as the operating system, we're going to choose Linux and other Linux. And here we set the memory. And it's, it's pretty safe to assume that most of them are going to be 256 megabytes. The bigger apps, the Java ones typically, like Alfresco um, and some of the other big ones, are going to use more than that. But uh, it's all right, we can change this after the fact. Let's just set it to 256 for now. Tell it to boot from the root and say finish. Now at this point we need to go in and attach the data hard disk and this is where there's some wackiness here. Uh, because if you're running multiple jump boxes you'd see a, a big list of data in root VMDKs here and there's no easy way to tell which is which other than looking down here and looking at the path. Um, you can also actually hover over it and there'll be a little tooltip that pops up. Um, so we're going to go back in here. We're going to attach the data VMDK. So we're going to click this tiny icon right here and then we're going to choose data. So that's good. Click OK. All right, so at this point we've configured the VM, we've attached the disks, and now we just need to change a couple more settings and we should be good to go. So we're going to go into general and advanced and here we're going to enable the VTX instruction set and if you're using an Intel Mac you definitely want to do this because if you don't it's going to be slow very slow um, okay so now last thing we need to do is because I want this to be accessible to other computers on the network um, we're going to configure the interface that it's using and uh, we're going to set it to from that we're going to change it to host interface and this is where it's a little bit weird um, whereas Parallels and Fusion will handle this for you uh, VirtualBox, you need to tell it what interface to use. So I'm using wireless right now, so I'm going to tell it to use my airport. Um, and there we go, we're good to go. So let's just go ahead and start the VM now. And you can see that it's going to look like this is what it always looks like when you load a jump box, but it's booting up um, a virtual computer, which is a jump box. And I'll take a sec here, and we'll just. Uh, fast forward. So as that finishes up here you can see this should look like a familiar site if you've ever used a jump box before. There's your IP address. You basically just grab that. Pop it into a web browser and you'll get your config screen. And this should look very familiar if you've ever used a jump box before. It's just our standard uh, config screen. You give it a bit of info, tell it your time zone, uh, specify a password.
agree to the license, click configure. And when it's done, then you have a fully functional configured instance of Sugar, and it's entirely free, running on a free open source virtualization platform. Um, so if you've never used any of our stuff, one other link of interest that might be helpful is uh, we do have a set of tutorials that we put together. It shows you all the basic usage with a jump box, so it might be worth it to go look at these. And that's just at slash docs slash v11 on our site. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this was useful for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave us comments on our blog or in our forums. Cheers.